one of the most beautiful cities in the world. But to us, San Francisco is the perfect spot for the final stop on our adventures through Italian California. The scenic beauty, the popular culture, and world-class cuisine are just a few of the sought-after features that have earned this Northern California metropolis the nickname, Everybody's Favorite City. And luckily, we've preserved just enough energy and hopefully room in our stomachs to experience as much of it as possible. But first, because San Fran was home to some of the earliest Italian settlers in America, a brief walk through its history is probably in order. The year is 1848. The United States is just over 70 years old, and Italy is about a dozen years away from becoming a unified country. California is not quite yet a state, and San Francisco is just a small seaport town of less than a thousand residents. But something is about to happen that will change everything. Less than 90 miles away, in what is today the city of Sacramento, a young carpenter from New Jersey named James Marshall is hard at work building a sawmill for property owner John Sutter. On a late January morning, in the channel bed of the South Fork American River, Marshall first lays eyes on the tiny gold flake that would spark one of the largest mass migrations in American history. Within just a few years, California's population more than doubled, bringing hundreds of thousands of ambitious newcomers to the area. And many were among one of the earliest waves of Italian immigration to the United States. Notable among these early Italian immigrants was Luigi Giannini, whose son Amadeo would go on to open the Bank of Italy in 1904, right here in San Francisco. Today, Giannini's company is the second largest banking institution in the United States. And perhaps you know it by the name it took on in 1930, the Bank of America. There was also Angelo Del Monte, who after an unsuccessful attempt to make a fortune in the gold rush, found figurative gold when he opened one of the oldest Italian restaurants in the country. But we'll get to that later, because right now, the only thing on our mind is sampling some of the finest chocolates available in America, produced, of course, by a company with deep Italian roots. Thank you. We are at Ghirardelli in San Francisco. I have not been here since I was a little kid. In 1849, Domenico Ghirardelli came here from Italy, started a general store, and now he built all this. I am so excited. I am a literal kid in a candy shop, and I'm easily distracted by shiny things, so if you'll excuse me. Domenico Ghirardelli was born in Rapallo, Italy in 1817, where as a child, he apprenticed for a local candy maker before setting sail for South America in his early 20s. He was in Lima, Peru, operating a confectionery store when word of the gold rush spread throughout the world. Never one to miss an opportunity, Domenico set his sights for California and never looked back. He opened several stores after his 1849 arrival, and after a roller coaster ride of success, failure, and misfortune, the Girardelli Chocolate Company was officially launched in 1852. And the rest, as they say, is history. Today, the company proudly asserts its status as the oldest continually operating chocolate maker in America, and is one of the very few to control each and every aspect of the manufacturing process, selecting only the finest cocoa seeds and producing some of the best confections that money can buy. <laughs> oh well, just an excuse to come back again. The California Gold Rush was an undeniable boon for the San Francisco area an economic and social explosion at the very root of the culturally rich society we encounter today. But very few of the fortunes amassed, especially by our fellow Italians, came directly from the prospecting of gold. Consider Ghirardelli, who got his American start by selling supplies and sweets to the miners, rather than doing the mining himself. Or we can turn our eyes towards Fisherman's Wharf, built on the backs of the Italian fishermen who saw opportunity in the area's population boom fisherman like Sicilian-born Giuseppe Di Maggio, who immigrated to the San Francisco area with his wife Rosalia in 1904. Ten years later, Rosalia gave birth to the couple's eighth child, who turned out to be one of America's most beloved Italian-American icons. While the Yankee Clipper didn't take to the bay's abundant waters like his father, and though he amassed his greatest glories across the country in the Bronx, he was a true San Franciscan at heart 
He even got married upon the hallowed ground of our very next stop, Saints Peter and Paul's Church, found right at the heart of North Beach's Italian community. Walking into the dim sanctuary from the bright San Francisco sun is an otherworldly experience. And like every church that we're blessed with the opportunity to visit, this one shares its rich history through its community's patron saints. Wherever Italians settled, they always brought the images of their patron saints because besides the devotion that they had, the religious devotion, it was also an emblem of, of their community, the town they came from, of, of their, their identity. Now, if you look in this little chapel that has all different statues of different saints, you see here Marona della Guardia. And why I was so surpri happily surprised to see her here is that Marona della Guardia came from Genoa, from, the area, from an area in Genoa. And they, wherever the Genovese went, they had a devotion to her. And there was a large Genovese community here in San Francisco, but also in San Luis, Argentina. If you go into the area of San Luis, which is a very rural area, the backwoods of Argentina, they also have a chapel dedicated to Marona de la Guardia because people from the same area of Genoa settled there. Now, if you also look here, here's an image of the Marona de Lume. Marona de Lume is a Sicilian Porticello, Sicily, but there was a community of fishermen from Porticello who settled here in San Francisco. They have an annual feast for Marona de Lume. But also a colony of the people from Porticello settled from San Francisco to San Diego, and they brought that devotion with them. So if you see our Lady of the Rosary Catholic Church in San Diego, you will also see an image of um, Marona del Lume from Porticello. So to me, that just is these little knots that tie Italian communities together and different, um, the same towns in Italy together, even though they settled in different parts of the world. The parish was founded in 1884, standing in its current location since 1924. And though it's most famous for being the childhood parish of one of America's greatest ballplayers, it stands today as the indispensable centerpiece of the area's Italian community and one of the most beautiful structures in all of San Francisco. If you're planning a trip to San Francisco's Little Italy, you might want to skip a meal or two before arriving. Sure, we've expressed similar sentiments in the past, but North Beach was a challenge even for a few Little Italy veterans like ourselves. I mean, you've got the neighborhood originals like Liguria's Bakery, founded by Genoese immigrants in 1911. Their focaccia is so good that it's all they even make anymore. I'm on a low-carb diet. <laughs> and then there's Victoria Pastry Company, also opened in 1911 by four immigrant bakers whose original recipes are still delighting the senses over 110 years later. I'm just gonna go in like an animal because it, it's family, I'm, I'm hungry. But predating each of them is Molinari Delicatessen, who we've been told produced some of the best sandwiches in the city. Now located on the legendary Columbus Avenue, they've been in operation since 1896, making this North Beach classic one of the oldest delis in the United States. My great-grandpa, from my grandpa to my father, and now to me. We've been doing this for four generations, and it's been a... Every day I feel like I'm in a movie. Continuing on Columbus Ave, there's Stella Pastry and Cafe, just in case you haven't had your fill of the sweet stuff. And over on Stockton, the Spinali family has been slicing up their fine select meats since 1951 at Little City Market. You don't want to miss out on the pasta and salads at Mona Lisa's. And perhaps world pizza champion Tony Germignani provides a glimpse into the neighborhood's future with Tony's Pizza Napolitana and his nearly brand new Giovanni Italian Specialties, opened in 2017. Yep. San Francisco is an Italian food lover's paradise, and good luck getting out without packing on a few pounds. But what about a place to sit, relax, and enjoy the company of a few fellow paisani? Maybe even work off a few of your newly acquired calories. All right, so we're in North Beach, San Francisco's Little Italy, and we're at the members-only entrance of the San Francisco Italian American Athletic Club. This is one of the oldest clubs in the country, 1917, and we know a guy, so they're gonna let us in, we hope. The club has been serving the North Beach community for generations and continues to be widely regarded as the heartbeat 
of San Fran's Italian community. And uh, the history of the athletic club actually starts from a few other Italian organizations in the neighborhood uh, that ultimately over time merged um, to create what is now known as the San Francisco Italian Athletic Club today. The first was the Unione Sportiva, as well as the Virtus Club and Sporting Club Italia. So there were three, four other uh, Italian clubs in the neighborhood, and they would compete against each other, as you can see with the different uniforms here in North Beach. So this is Columbus Avenue. Uh, the Transamerica Pyramid would be at our back. They're looking up Columbus, and they would run this foot race, shut down the whole uh, North Beach uh, neighborhood and compete against each other. And then after the races, they'd come here, they'd hang out, they'd eat, they'd drink, they'd socialize. And that was really the, the purpose of the club, was a place for them to relax and hang out with each other uh, after these various athletic competitions. Today, it's a place where you can throw a party, attend a community event, shoot a few hoops, or just sidle up to the bar for some cocktails and conversation. It's got everything that an active, enthusiastic Italian-American could want, and officially, makes our list of the top spots in Italian San Francisco. There she goes. Hey, Rosella. That'll Forza. be first time's a charm. Rosella. This is beautiful. The history of the Bay Area is a rich one, filled with countless interesting stories that help to explain the fascinating city you see before you today. But unfortunately, no story is complete without its share of tragedy. Ghirardelli, for example, lost two of his earliest stores to fires, both inside of a single week, no less. But it was 60 seconds on the morning of April 18th, 1906, that brought devastation, the likes of which few have ever seen. The Great Quake still ranks amongst the worst natural disasters in American history, claiming the lives of over 3,000 people and destroying an estimated 28,000 buildings. That's roughly 80% of the entire city. Among them were many of the places we visited, including the church, Molinari's, and the original location of our very last stop. So if you recall, the, what I was saying from the 1906 earthquake, right? So all that debris, we cleared out, and then right away, um, you see, so that was like a facade right there. And we, uh, we just had a tent, and we served the soup and bread right the next day. Yeah. Fior d'Italia, Italian for Flower of Italy, was opened on May 1st, 1886, by Angelo Del Monte, who originally came to America in search of gold. But when his attempts at prospecting came up empty, Del Monte saw opportunity in serving food to the city's fortune hunters. So he moved to San Francisco, and along with fellow immigrant Armido Marianetti, developed one of the finest eateries of its day. And it might be the oldest Italian restaurant in America, depending on who you're talking to, of course. Another piece of information, so Ralph's, they're in uh, Philadelphia. Oh, I know, I've been there yeah. many times. So there was a, a debate of I know. who was the oldest. So they are, uh, I, think, I believe the same location, but they're about 15 years younger than we are. So, the, so, like I said, the key thing is we're the oldest continuously Italian restaurant running yeah. with the same name. Yes. Yeah. Ralph's is in the same location. Exactly. exactly so, yeah. we can, sh an Italian American compromise, you can share. Ralph's is the oldest in one spot, this is the oldest, same business. Same business, one same name, continuously running. Correct, yeah. The Fior is a North Beach institution, the little engine that could of Italian restaurants, if you will. It has survived fires, a once in a century natural disaster, a depression, pandemics, and world wars, and still manages to keep those doors open, showcasing the values of resilience and pride that define the Italian-American experience. This is one of the happiest days of your life. I'm very happy. I've been, this is like it's a pilgrimage a, you, You've made it now. Yeah. You've done it. This yeah. is a John Viola golden moment yeah. right and now. And if I can deliver to them can great food, understand. it'll make me feel even higher. So I'm looking forward That's to this. Brave. The love he has for historical Italian-American restaurants, yeah. it's beyond your comparison. Yeah. Until you've been with him in one of these restaurants, you'll never get This is it. my Super Bowl, so let, let's go eat. I'm starving. All right, guys, look, I'm freezing. I cannot wait to get back to muggy, hot, congested too much, Brooklyn. Too much, too much. It is cold too out much. here. Yeah. Cold, too much. The uh, foggy, gray July day might not be what we expected in California, 
But the truth is, this has been a week of the unexpected in Italian California. We have been everywhere from the oldest Italian restaurant in the country to the newest Little Italy. And the bottom line is, this is a wonderful, dynamic, and exciting part of Italian America. I mean, it was, San Francisco was a little cold, but the people were very warm. Yeah, I mean, we've met were. great people. Very nice people. We ate, nice people, great food. We had a good time. Wonderful businesses, institutions, everything that you want to see in Italian America. So if you've enjoyed our adventure, make sure to tune in next time as we continue to travel around Italian America to bring you the best of our culture here in the United States. And if you'd like us to come see you, drop us a line. Don't forget your long johns if you're coming to San Francisco. <laughs> Come on yeah. out Let's, ride. Let's go back. Greetings from Italian America. This is Nicola with Molinari Delicatessen in San Francisco. The home of an outstanding range of salamis Absolutely. and cured meats. Greetings from Italian America from Buono's Pizzeria here in San Pedro in the heart of Little Italy. Okay. Greetings from Italian America in Hollywood. Greetings, y'all. I sound just like a Westerner, don't I? <laughs> oh, ready for Hollywood. We don't know the words. We don't know the words. So we're gonna make them up. They gotta come. They don't know where they are going. They don't know what they are doing. <laughs>